All right, guys, it is 2.02, .02, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Our webinar today is on increasing your lawn and landscape sales. My name's Katie. I'm going to be your um, MC today. And your hosts are Rob McCoy from Organics and Lee over at Exact. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. My pleasure. Can't wait. So, oops. So a little bit about your host. Rob is our national sales manager over at Holganics. Rob, say hello. Hello, everyone. Rob has over 20 some years in the industry, right? Yeah, it's quite a bit. Literally started <laughs> his way up from a technician, uh, ran his own company, started his own company, ran it, sold it, and uh, joined the Holganics crew in... 2015, 16. 16? Okay, I was close. Beginning of 16. Yeah. I was close. Um, you guys may have heard him speak on previous webinars before. He's usually one of our stars. <laughs> well, it's my pleasure to be on here. And uh, this is actually one of my favorite topics. I'm um, talking about growing uh, lawn and landscape companies. And it can really add a lot of excitement into, into your business. And, uh, you know, we, I have a saying. Uh, when I go to visit clients, uh, anytime they have a problem, sales fix anything. So we're going to focus on that. Awesome. And then Lee is the co-owner and general manager over at Exact. He has an equally impressive, if not more so, resume than you, Rob, I believe. Um, although I see he's still having some audio problems. Um, so Lee's uh, company is located over in Dayton. Anything you want to, that's Ohio, anything you want to specifically say regarding Lee and yeah, Exact? I, I would say that, um, and I hope he gets his, the audio stuff figured out, but um, you know, I meet with a lot of different clients and a lot of different experience. Lee is um, very unique in not just his firsthand experience uh, in growing uh, companies, but also in uh, some of the work that he's done in, in helping some of his friends with their companies. And, and uh, you know, it's very seldom that I get to share some ideas with someone and they've tried them. Uh, so it, it's, we have some fun conversations and around really how to push the envelope and, and think outside the box. Um, so I'm excited to have him on here. Awesome. Well, uh, before we get started, I do want to let everybody know that this webinar is being recorded and we will be shooting you guys out an email with the recording, with the PowerPoint, with the resources mentioned today and a bunch of other fun stuff. Lee, can you say hello? Hey, how's it going? Awesome. Hey, Thanks Lee. so much for joining us, Lee. I really appreciate it. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. I'm getting over a cold, so I don't sound the greatest. Oh, well, we appreciate you being here. All right, cool. Thanks, well, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say thanks so much for having me. Yeah, I appreciate it. All right. Well, Rob, this is where I turn it over to you. All right. So, um, you know, when Katie and I originally started discussing this webinar and, and just focusing on sales, um, there's some key aspects that we really need to make sure that we hit on before we get into some of the, the details. Um, so this is a, a kind of an overview of what we're going to do today. Um, you know, measuring success, that's going to be a focus on, on goals, uh, building a marketing plan. That's, that's usually something that a lot of companies struggle with, um, and that they want to have a marketing plan, uh, but they don't always know everything that should go into it. Um, designing a referral program, uh, in my mind is, one of the best ways to, to build a, a lawn or landscape company. Uh, the cancel save process, uh, that's uh, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, everyone being a salesperson, uh, some of the resources that, that Katie has pulled together for us, and then we're gonna do some Q&A. And, &A. and I, would, I would recommend that as we go through this, um, type in your questions as we go along, um, because I'm sure that other people have the same questions, and that way when we get to the end, we can kind of just fly right through those questions, make sure that all of them got answered, um, even if uh, they uh, were answered once already later in the uh, webinar. And today is really going to be, uh, what was the expression you used? 
like uh, taking a fire hose. Like, yes, we're, we're going to we're not going to go through this slowly. Like this is, we're not going to waste your time. We're not going to draw it out. This is, we're, we're starting right now and it's going to be a lot of information. Yeah. So I just want to warn everyone um, that that is like, be prepared. So this is a great quote from Thomas Edison. Good, good fortune is what happens when opportunity meets with planning. So we're focused on developing a plan um, that is uh, easily executed and um so that you guys can put some of these ideas into place right away and um, reap the benefits from that so developing a sales and marketing plan so obviously we want to start with a, a revenue goal everybody always thinks about that but it's it's surprising to me even though it's thought about how many people don't have a crystal clear number that is agreeable with their business uh, so they may say that they want to grow by a million dollars, but do you have the infrastructure in place to do that? Do you understand what a million dollars looks like when it's translated into other business numbers? So a million dollars is nice. How many customers is that? How much square footage is that? Uh, how much investment will that take in order to uh, accomplish that? Uh, so you really want to make sure that you dive into it. So if we just use the million dollar mark and say that, all right, we know our, our customer value has been $500 annually. Uh, we know it's 2000 customers. So I'm math right on that. <laughs> it's, it's afternoon time for me, Rob, my math's gone. Um, so you're going to need, so you want to know, all right, so if we do get 2000 customers, are we going to be able to, to service 2000 customers? With that being said, how much of that needs to be prepaid in order to be able to pay for the, the infrastructure to service those customers? Uh, so it's not just a matter of getting customers um, because you can get customers and it can backfire and end up being a waste of money at the same time. Because, uh, and I can give you a, a, a very clear example. Uh, one time when um, uh, we were in business and we were a million dollar lawn care company focused strictly on residential. We wanted to become a $2 million lawn care company and we decided to take on commercial work. Hmm. We immediately, uh, within, I would say three months acquired $1 million worth of commercial work. And we quickly realized that it was not the same thing. Um, and it was very difficult to service. Um, we actually grew, we doubled our business and uh, our profitability went down. Uh, so, and not just down like in a percentage point, like we literally had less profit with twice the amount of revenue. Uh, so be careful what you wish for sometimes and make sure that your goal is very clearly defined. Um, knowing what your, your cost per sale is, is very critical because frankly there's there's different value for different customers uh if you see down at the bottom the last the bullet point there it's golden street approach and we'll get to that but what we want to focus on is do you know what the value of your current customers are and do you know which customers are more valuable than others because if you can focus on which customers have higher value you're willing to spend more money to get those customers um, you know, we uh, mentioned uh, referrals. One of the reasons why referrals are good is is because of the the difference in profitability in getting a neighbor versus someone that's the first customer on the street. Um, so that's something that in in cost per sale to make sure that you're aware of. Um, what's your budget? You know, I mentioned prepays. Prepays is a way to um, circumvent uh, part of your budget. Because as you're getting new sales, if you have a certain percentage of customers that are prepaying, that in essence can be paying for some of your sales and marketing efforts. Um, and you can potentially increase your budget with that, with that number. Uh, a content calendar is critical. Um, you want to make sure that you have pre-planned uh, valid information for your customers and that you are not behind on any of your marketing efforts. Uh, I can tell you that in my time in lawn care, um, we've had a lot of great ideas a week too late. 
Um, and it wasn't really until the following season that we could take advantage of it, whether it was a Father's Day special or um, a Halloween aeration and seeding special or something like that. We, we would find that we would miss opportunities like Valentine's Day. You know, Valentine's Day just came and went. And um, a good example of having content ready is so the, the last second opportunity for a spouse to um, get that as a get long care package as a present for their spouse so that they don't have to do it. Uh, husband or wife, doesn't matter whoever's responsible for it. But if somebody's searching for a gift to give somebody, be the thing that's in front of them, be the advertisement that's there. You know, we see the commercials on on TV um, adapt for the holidays that are coming up and the seasonal changes. You have to be prepared to do the same thing. Um, and then pay attention to what your competition is doing, because if you see that your competition is um, taking a particular angle that you're not, and they suddenly seem like they are gaining market share faster than you are, uh, you want to make sure that you know what they're doing. Um, and, and that's pretty, it's a pretty simple approach, but you always want to know, you want to follow them on their social media. Um, you want to be aware of everything that they're, that they're doing. Uh, and then the Golden Street approach, you know, and going back to the, the cost per sale, um, you know, the Golden Street approach was, is, is really at a high level focusing on your most profitable customers uh, and most profitable prospects. Um, Katie, do we have a, uh, there's a slide later. Yeah, for, for most okay. of these. Okay, let's. let's That's okay. <laughs> so the content calendar. Um, so we want to make sure that we plan out things quarterly, monthly, weekly. Um, it all depends on how fast you want to uh, keep content in front of your uh, clients or your prospects. Lee, what have you found as far as uh, the timing that has worked for you on, on the content calendar? Um, as, as far as putting out like social, social media content or, or reaching out as far as, uh, can you define that for me, Rob? Well, let's just focus on social media because that's something that everybody can do very easily. Well, I, I found that uh, just, you know, dealing with the Facebook page um, and putting things out daily um, for the first few weeks, and it was really just a test run to see what kind of feedback we got. Um, it turned out that most of the content that was being viewed was being viewed between 4 a.m. in the morning and roughly 9 a.m. in the morning. Um, and then a, there was a drop off until the evening when everybody got off work. So we found if we started, uh, you know, making some posts and doing some things um, more along the lines of midnight, one o'clock, I know it's kind of late, but having that stuff out there for it to be fresh in that, that early morning hour, I guess, when most people are getting up to go to work, they've sat down for coffee, they're looking at Facebook in the bathroom. Um, I found that, you know, getting that stuff out there as, as late as possible the night before allows it to be seen the most as early as possible in the morning. Um, and with, you know, with no marketing plan, as far as the, the, the Facebook, the social media goes, other than just put our stuff out there, um, and be as honest as we can be about it has really worked out well for us. Okay. That's great. Um, and, and there's one thing I want to highlight here. We, we have Katie with us and everybody's heard Katie on here. Um, and Katie's going to try and fly, fly below the radar right now. But the reason that you're all on this webinar is because of Katie's marketing. Um, and Katie does uh, all of the marketing for Holganics. So she has a significant amount of uh, experience with this. So Katie, when you're setting up a, um, a campaign for something like this, you pre-plan all the timing of when, the, when those drops are happening, right? Yeah, and I use multiple channels. So it's not just social media that I'm hitting guys on, it's, the e it's email, it's letting my sales guys know so they can make the phone calls or the ones that have the relationships with our customers. Mm -hmm. Um, and planning it all out in advance. A lot of our stuff, um, which this is a bit taboo if you do this too much, but a lot of our stuff is scheduled out in advance. So um, right now, you know, Robot Katie is posting on Facebook. I'm not posting on Facebook, but it frees me up as a, as a one person marketing team to be working on other things at the same time. So that's another reason why the content calendar is so crucial. 
And I really love the templates offered by HubSpot. We use HubSpot as a content marketing solution software, and um, they have a lot of free resources. Their content, they call them editorial calendars, but they have several different versions that are really great. They have another one that's specific to social media even that's awesome. Yeah, why don't you take us through just these examples? Yeah, these are just examples of um, different companies. And I liked this one specifically because I'm all about being visual. And this is broken down by um, actual channel that they were using. So this goes by the week. So this is a week of, of their content calendar. And this one... Um, I'm also a big fan of post-it notes. So this one, literally, they printed out um, a basic annual calendar and they broke it up by month. And they said, these are the big campaigns we're going to be focused on. And these are the different elements we're going to pull in order to make that happen. You can see blogging is super important to them, but they got stuff on video and email and such as well. Okay, awesome. And I mean, you can you can do it with a just a, a piece of paper and a pen. Definitely, it does not have to look pretty. And that's usually how ours start. Oh yeah. By paper and pen, and then we start to get a little fancier, a little bit more organized. Um, a quick question before we move on to the Golden Street. Um, touch points mm. for when you do a campaign. Do you have a minimum and maximum that you kind of, uh, when you're focused on one thing, like just take for example, a webinar. Right. What's the uh, minimum amount of touch points to do to even get a result and a uh, maximum amount of, of touch points where it would possibly be annoying? So um, they say that something like eight or nine touches as a frequency is somehow this magical number. Mm -hmm. um, you guys that are on this may have been uh, had um, three to eight touch points, depending on how engaged you are with our social media. Um, so when it comes to something that's a, forgive me guys, a low risk offer, like a webinar, I'm trying to sell you to come onto our webinar as opposed to buying our product. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be less touch points, especially since we're not really talking about our product on here. We're talking about marketing and sales. Yep. So creating value added content that's low risk offer is gonna be much less touches mm -hmm. in order to see a return versus something like buy Holganics, yeah. you know. Lee, when, uh, uh, same question for you on touch points when it comes to um, uh, acquiring a new lawn care customer. Um, I, guess it, I guess it would depend. Um, it would depend on which way you're going at it, but it, it's like a cold, like a door knock or a cold call. Um, a lot of those can be transitioned at, at, with one touch, but it, it also depends on the amount of objections and rebuttals you're prepared with. Um, so, you know, as far as one touch, you can knock on the door and somebody can tell you no seven times. So you might've had to take eight objections, but it's still a one touch sale. Some of these, I mean, I mean the majority of our sales come um, really from that is just, you know, a, a one sale close. Um, and confirming service and, and moving along because it, it isn't a huge decision to be made as far as when you break down, the, it, it's a luxury service, it's being paid for already. Um, and if you believe you are the best, there's no reason to come back for a second attempt. So as far as, as the cold leads, you, you, you really wanna attack that hard and present your product and your service. Um, as far as like I've seen with, with our marketing and sending letters out, um, sometimes it takes, you know, three, four or five times calling back. So I, I would say the six to eight number probably is right where it would land as Katie said before. Yeah. And, and, and I would make sure that when you are creating a, uh, a marketing plan and, and, uh, developing that calendar, classify your, uh, activities into indirect and direct marketing. Mm. Um, that's two really important categories to, to balance out because indirect marketing, you know, in, in, uh, in Lee's approach where he was saying that you can, uh, do a one, uh, one hit close, um, that is very possible, but it's also reinforced through indirect marketing, seeing the trucks out on the, uh, at the neighbor's property or on their street, um, and having it be noticeable, um, having social media posts, but they may not click through, but they, 
you, you through indirect marketing, you're developing a presence. Uh, direct marketing is literally asking for the activity. Um, so you're, you're that that's closing time uh, when you're you're trying to get into uh, a response. When you get a response, then you know it's go time and you fall right into Lee's example of making sure that you have your rebuttals ready because um, the the quickest way to get a sale is to be able to answer questions and rebuttal problems um, rather than making a second or third phone call um, and basically reintroducing yourself and reestablishing trust. Um, so uh, make sure that you, you have those rebuttals. And if you're working with a sales team, that you uh, do rebuttal work every single day um, before you hop on the phones. Um, so, you know, hey, what did we hear yesterday? What was the the uh, best way to handle that? Uh, make sure everybody's in agreement so that the communication's consistent and, and concise and accurate um, because you don't want to promise something that you can't deliver. So in going to the uh, the Golden Street approach, so basically when we, when I was in lawn care previously, um, you know, we were growing at a very fast rate and we were paying for every sale that we were making and we had about a $100 acquisition fee for every new customer uh, and we thought we had our system down uh, because we had days that we would sell 100, 100 customers uh, we had a large sales team we were at about 20 salespeople. Um, but with that being said um, we eventually realized that we were getting customers that weren't our ideal customers so we started to put a lot of focus into who is our ideal customer and how do we get them uh, so that's when we came up with the Golden Street approach. We we classified our customers based on uh, certain demographics, um, whether it was property size, home value, dual income, um, whether they had lawn service before. Uh, but geographically, it was probably one of the most important things. If we had a customer on that street, if we had more than one customer on a specific street, we pounded the marketing on that street because the profitability of the the potential customers that we were going to get on that street because we already had customers there would increase by 50 percent so say that you have a, a customer that's a hundred dollars an application and you're making fifty dollars on the application their neighbor you're going to make 75 dollars on the application so you're willing to spend a little bit more to get the right customer especially when you start getting streets where you have five, six, 10 customers, and you can treat them all in one stop. Uh, because windshield time, no matter which aspect of lawn and landscape we're talking about, windshield time is the killer. Um, it's the killer for uh, you know, doing sales, it's the, it's the killer for uh, doing your production, for service calls. Uh, the more windshield time you have, the harder it is to become profitable. So spend your marketing dollars on the Golden Streets. Make sure you identify who your ideal customer is in your area and where your best customers are. Um, we, were, we did it as simply as we had four different classifi classifications of customers. We had A, B, C, and X. Um, and one other thing that we did with them that was interesting was that we offered uh, different pricing for those customers. So our A-level customers not only did not get a price increase, they got a customer loyalty discount. Um, we would show them what they were valued at as far as their property uh, service, and then we would discount that so that they saw that they were getting a better bang for the buck. Um, and then our B and Cs, um, we would do different level price increases each year. So say that one, our B customers were at a 2% price increase and our C level customers were at a 4% a, a price increase. And then the X customers, we would do a really high price increase because we weren't really trying to keep them as a customer because it either wasn't profitable enough to steal time away from the, the, the other customers, the A, B and Cs that we had, or it was completely counterproductive and we really needed to, to get rid of them or, or run the price up. Uh, so 
uh, spend time on the on the golden streets, identifying who your customers are and and how you're going to acquire that customer. And we'll have a video and a blog on this topic as well. Okay. Um, so we have mentioned the competition before. Um, making sure that you are aware of the social media. Uh, there's nothing stopping you from following them on social media. And 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 Katie, I want you to elaborate on the Google Alerts uh, yeah. for your competition. So you can set up Google Alerts on yourself. So for example, we have one set up for Holganix. So for whenever Holganix is mentioned, um, doesn't have to be by us that's doing the mentioning, it could be by somebody else. Uh, but we also have them set up for our competition. Okay. So we know if they're putting out a press release or if somebody's talking about them online. Mm -hmm. And so not only for us, but for uh, any of our competitors and see what they're just talking about. Yeah. Okay. Um, Lee, have you done anything along those lines? Just to, and, and not just those lines, what are other ways that you pay attention to the competition? Um, well, you know, at the end, you've got to know me, Rob, you know, we're, we're pretty possessive, um, with our customers and, and our market. At, and the reason is, is because of obviously the, the program that you've, you've helped provide us here. But, um, the thing about it is, is it, it really comes back to, like you said, in the beginning, how, how fast you want to go. Um, cause there, these are simple steps that you put into place that get immediate results and then the results come fast. So like the golden streets if you really target the golden streets and you treat your technicians also like your salespeople and you allow them to, you know, stop by the neighbor's house, allow them more time. Um, if you're able to do those things, you're going to be able to generate sales immediately because if you're, say you guys do, I mean, if there's door knocking going on, you come back through after the technicians already stopped by, said hello, the lawn looks good next door if you're doing a good job. Um, as far as the competition goes, we, we look at everybody. Um, we look at everybody because we don't claim to be the best at everything. So we want to pay attention to all the good stuff that everybody's doing. Um, and really, if you're, if you're being kind to your competition, there's no reason that competition can't work together. Um, so that's kind of the way we feel about things as far as that goes. Okay, cool. So the referral program. So this is actually one of my, I like talking about Golden Streets, but I love talking about a referral program because it ties in with the Golden Streets perfectly. Um, when people think about a referral program, and if you've been in the industry, you've seen other companies, your competition's referral programs, the standard 25 and 25, you know, 25 to the referral, 25 to the referee, um, for future services, you know, discount. Um, really, you want to think about who are you trying to acquire. Um, what is the acquisition cost that you're that you're targeting? You know, some of the numbers that we have mentioned in the in the beginning of the webinar. Um, but when I think about referrals, I I don't want just a referral program. I want to refer your neighbor program. I want to get the the adjoining properties. Um, because that is going to drive my profitability up. So how do I target them? One of the interesting ways that we did it in the past, and this was 15 plus years ago, um, was when we were thinking about this concept, uh, one of our technicians came up with the idea of, why don't you just have pricing on Frisbees and throw the Frisbees to the neighbor's property so you don't have to walk over there? So pretty much every other application that we would do, the technicians would stop, get out of the truck, throw five fris Frisbees, you know, one to each side of that, the house that they're doing and the three across the street. And the, the, those people would get a nice Frisbee. It would have our advertisement on there. And on the back side, it would have pricing for what their, their property would be per application. Um, we got a lot of customers doing that and a lot of really profitable customers doing that. But that's not necessarily a referral program, but it is a, a focus on how, how do you get the neighbors. So when we talked about like an acquisition cost of $100 for a new customer, how much would you spend to get not only the neighbor of a, of a current customer, but the, the, the added benefit of that current customer vouching for you? Because what happens is 
that when you have a current customer referring someone else to your service, it's not just getting a new customer, you're also getting a more loyal customer from the referee. Um, and, and that is extremely important because you cannot have net growth in, in lawn care if you don't have a, a uh, reduced amount of cancellations. Um, and you're gonna be able to combat can cancellations with customer loyalty. So it, it, you wanna make sure that you focus on how do I build up the customer's trust and, and respect and, and excitement about the business that we're in and still acquire new customers at the same time. So I would challenge you to think outside the box a little bit. And, and Lee, you, you guys did a, a good job on a couple of different aspects with this that I just saw this year. Um, that uh, where you're thinking about like other businesses within the, within the um, not even the industry, but you know, maybe home services. Uh, can you elaborate on that, Lee, where like you, uh, you kind of went outside the box and it wasn't just like, oh, we're going to give you a credit on service. It was a completely different service. Yeah. Um, what, what I would say is with what we were trying to do was it was not necessarily to offer another service and be like everybody else. We, we wanted to kind of give back exactly, you know, you need something tangible. So like, like your, you, you show here the, you know, the $25 discount or the gift card. But if, if you send out a, you know, a gift card that's tangible um, and like you said, it comes back to your cost of acquisition, but uh I would say, you know, if you send out a $25 gift card that somebody can hold and cash and swipe and buy something with, yeah. um, it's well, I've, it's already shown to to work well. So that's something that that we're doing here um, is just literally giving them the real money back. I mean, if you would pay $100 for, you know, the acquisition of a new sale, as you said, you know, to have a neighbor, I get how much would you pay? Yeah. I would easily give $150 for that neighbor. Um, and, and I think that you, that the tangible aspect is really important. And, and there is a much different feel between giving a credit for service and giving someone actually cash back. Um, one other thing that I've seen uh, done in the past is a, uh, a debit card, a debit card with your logo and your company information on the front of it where it can just be automatically filled for every referral that uh, that customer is providing. Uh, so it's a great advertisement. It lives with them in their wallet. And they, yeah, they probably forget about it from time to time, but when they have hundreds of dollars built up in it, that's not just gonna be excitement. That's gonna be like, holy cow, I can't believe this company's doing this for me. Um, and it's a, a really smart way to do it. Something I would suggest people look into um, is how do you do that that uh, refillable gift card approach um, so that they you can, to Lee's point, have that tangible aspect in front of you, but also, you know, have, it, have the ability to have it build up and, and be even more of a wow factor. So we had, I, I had mentioned cancels in the, uh, when we were talking about referrals and net growth and, and, you can't forget about cancellations um, and you really need to be as proactive as you possibly can be. But at the end of the day, there's going to be a lack of communication sometimes where even if you're calling a customer proactively, they're, they're not answering their phone or they're just not getting back to you until that day where you get a call and, and Mr. Smith wants to cancel his service and, and you're totally caught off guard. Um, so with that being said, there's a, a couple of key points. Um, you want to make sure that you have a point person on those cancellations. Somebody has to own it within your company. It cannot be a group effort where it's everybody focuses, focuses on it because if everyone's focused on it, it's no one's priority. Um, so you need to have someone that really owns that priority and, and pays attention to the exact number. Um, also, if you're going to have someone in charge of cancel saves, uh, they have to have some uh, flexibility and ability to um, really attack them. And, and you know, uh, when, when Lee was talking about rebuttals before, 
well, you have to be a rebuttal specialist with the cancel saves. Um, and this is really like some of the best lawn care salespeople that I've ever seen at some point in time spent a, a, a significant amount of time dedicated to cancel saves um, for two reasons. One, it uh, sharpens your skills. Two, there's not a lot of people that can do it um, unless you're doing it over and over and over again and you're just that person in the office that is, hey, I'm going to make it my initiative that we're not losing any customers. Um, and, and there's there's some guidelines to, to utilize. Um, always have an exit interview uh, with with any canceled customers. So if they call into the office and say, I'd like to cancel my service, all right, I will put that request in, but so-and-so is going to have to contact you and provide you with the exit interview so that they we can officially cancel your service. They will call you within this amount of time. Um, that way that they will, you're making it so that they'll answer the phone uh, in order to accomplish what they want to accomplish, but it gives you an opportunity to, to not only try and save them, but understand even if you can't save them, why they would want to cancel the service in the first place. Sometimes it's in your control, sometimes it's out of your control. Um, but if you take the approach that it's always in your control, um, then you're going to be much more successful in, in saving those cancels. Um, create a cancel save process. I just mentioned one part of it, but you have to have follow-up letters. You have to um, have uh, like possibly a departing gift because the, the one of the things that you get with a cancel customer is you don't want negative publicity. Um, you, the, the, there's a lot of negative advertising that can, that can happen. If somebody's unhappy with the service, they're going to tell 10 people. If somebody's happy with it, they're going to tell one. So that's why you got to make sure that you avoid the negative advertising uh, that, that you just don't want out there on the street. Um, let's see, uh, the 30% reimbursement. This was a number that, that we've used in the past. So if you take the, to the annual value of a customer and you um, have someone on the phone trying to save that customer without asking permission you know, to say, oh, can I give them this service or that service, they automatically could go up to 30% of the value of that customer. Uh, so if they were $500, they knew they had $150 in services right off the bat without the hesitation that they could offer in order to save that customer. Um, and, and, and possibly the most important thing with cancel saves is making sure that you get the question out, how do I get you to be a happy customer and refer me to a friend? Because I don't want them to just come back on board and, and, and be resentful and because I talked them into it. I want them to actually be excited again. I want them to, you know, if, if your customers are not ready to refer other customers, then you're not doing a good enough job. You have to have customers that are excited to refer your business and that you can constantly have that conversation with them. So get the, get the question out there with, with some of the, the uh, customers that are going to be the hardest to deal with. My goal is to make it so that you're, you're going to refer me to your friends. So how can I accomplish that? And I'll tell you, in my experience, and, and, and Lee, I'm going to come to you right after this. In my experience, every time I asked someone what they wanted and they told me, it was well within reason that I was going to do that. Um, it was just usually a lack of communication that got us to that point. Lee, what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I mean, I, I agree with you. I mean, there's a fine line there, so I don't want to, I don't want to disagree with you. So I agree with you, but the fine line is, is, is I honestly don't believe after years of experience that you can truthfully have one person run that. And the reason is, is because you need a development system to figure out from each department when you want to hold your production accountable so they have to be aware of these things that are taking place so what you need is a guy to really work with each department and a specific guy from your department that way you're able to because you shouldn't continuously take cancels i mean it's 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 kind of a, a plug the whole system you know what i mean if, if you know you're taking cancels because the lawns look bad i mean you, you got to fix the lawns you got to make the lawns look good if you're taking cancels because of miscommunication so I, I, I don't want to oversimplify it, but it is as easy as identifying the department that's not succeeding and that's causing the problem. Because as you said, you know, the fine line with that, with having an, a, a cancel and then bringing that customer back on board 
is like you said, one of two things. Well, you, you save the customer and you save the, the loss of a future prospect. And not only do you do that, but when you have a problem with a customer and you fix that problem, you develop a relationship mm -hmm. and a sense of um, being able to rely on you and see that you can take the adversity so that, you know, the, the, that customer is, is way more loyal if you're able to come through on your promise when fixing that problem. So it's, it is a huge deal to bring a customer back on, but you really need to identify where you're losing them in the first place. Um, Cause if you nip that at the bud in the source, nip it in the bud at the source, you're able to, to cut down needing an entire team or the stress of maintaining, you know, those cancels. Yeah, absolutely right. And, and just to clarify that point on the single person, single person owning the number basically, own the the um, the the tracking of it to relay that information back to those different departments. Um, you know, just so that like there was, it's almost like creating a funnel process that like you're gonna have to get past this checkpoint, and this this person is the is the checkpoint, so that we get accurate information filtered out through the company, so that we can fix these problems upstream. Last point, this is the last point, right? That's right. Everyone is a salesperson, really simple concept. If you're in a business right now and you have dedicated salespeople and you have other people that are not selling, um, you need to make sure that everyone at least has basic sales training um, if, and, and identify what their opportunities are. Lee hit, the, hit on this a little bit earlier when he was talking about uh, the technicians going out. It is absolutely critical that everyone in the business is a salesperson because everyone's going to be able to sell to a different uh, client base. Uh, a lot of people really like being, uh, uh, I guess, sold um, lawn care service from the technician because they, they don't seem like a salesperson. They seem more genuine, less threatening. Um, there's more accurate information because they're out there. They're their guy. Um, that's the person that they want to deal with. So they, they tend to have a lot of success. But also, if you um, have people within your business and they're not talking to their friends and family about uh, the business that they're in and, and excited about it and the, and the service that they can provide, then, you know, how committed are they really to the business? Um, not because they're not getting sales, but they should be excited about it. And, and if the more investment that your employees have in their friends and family getting that service, the more investment they're going to have into the company and making that a great company. Um, so there's opportunities everywhere for, for all of your employees to uh, make sales and everyone should have the ability to earn a commission uh, on those sales. Uh, Lee, do you think that's, accurate in your experience yeah I, I honestly i think that everybody can sell for you um not just the employees but you know we exercise all kinds of different things um local businesses um it just like i said it comes down to your your cost of of, of acquisition and, and how wild you're you're willing to be um with going after sales and getting your name out there so um we've done a few things where we've you know allowed employees wives to hand them out at work we've got a lot of employees with with nurses who are wives or moms that are nurses so um with this whole organic organic approach that we're we're doing now it's allowed us to be able to target um you know more of a, a higher percentage of the medical field who would normally not have any any chemicals on their their lawn so we've done a lot of cool things where We've just said, you know, give these fly flyers out. Anybody who calls in and, and gives your name, you'll get that $25 gift card for referral. Um, and and by doing that, we, I mean, we've seen a great transition by working with other companies and just, it, it gives a little bit of worth to your flyers and cards. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's kind of been a big deal. Yeah. And if you're really, if, if you're serious about growing your company, then you have to make sure that you're using uh, all of the resources that you have. 
And speaking of resources, speaking of Katie, resources. why don't you take us through, through some of the free resources that yes. you've got, of course. Um, so we talked about the marketing calendar templates. I'll be shooting this out to you guys, so don't worry about writing all this down. Um, the Golden Street Approach, we have a blog, videos. I think we have a webinar just on that topic. Um, monitoring co competition online, uh, link to Google Alerts there. Building your long care marketing plan video. So we just took the beginning of this webinar and deep dove it into a marketing plan. Um, Survey Monkey. It's a there's a free version available, and you can do uh, surveys out to your customers in order to gauge how uh, happy they are with your service. So definitely take advantage of that free version. And then the NPS score, mm -hmm. we didn't really touch on it that much. No, but when we were uh, talking about uh, cancel saves of being proactive, doing phone calls ahead of time, but also uh, getting their feedback, possibly anonymously, uh, is important to know what the, the real temperature is of, of your customer base. Um, you know, if, you're, if your approach is, hey, we're great, and I'm going to just bury my head in the sand and, and believe that I'm right, but not know that I'm right. Uh, it's not going to work really well for you for an extended period of time. So getting the survey information, the NPS scores, I think are pretty critical. And, and I'll be honest, I'll, I'll jump in there with you, Rob, real quick. And I'll give you guys something um, with the audit process. If you if you do an audit process and you and you talk to the people before you start your season, um it, it just it's a huge deal not only for the customer but for your production starting on the right foot you don't send your guys out there to get beat up by people who don't want them there and you're also able to gauge your customer base immediately so you know whether or not um, your customer does want to do all of your applications and is excited about lawn care or if it's a guy who actually hasn't had great results or a good relationship with lawn care companies and it's your job to totally earn um, his trust back not only for you know lawn care in general but so that you can continue to service his property and be profitable yeah excellent point yeah we also have a bunch of Hoganics uh, marketing support available on the lawn care marketing support page um, like so many pieces of information that you can download from postcard designs to webinars like this. Um, we also have the blog and our Holganix webinars. And I will tell you guys, um, if you liked this webinar, you should check us out on uh, next Tuesday and the Tuesday after that, we'll be back for more. Uh, we have optimizing production efficiencies, five tips to build processes, that's next week. And the week after is building your fertilizer program maximizing agronomic performance without breaking the bank. Sweet. Who's doing those? Oh, you will be. <laughs> <laughs> I need that. You will have uh, backup dancers, so um, it won't just be you. But um, it'll, be, it'll be a lot of fun, and there's a lot of great information. I will tell you guys that we talk to uh, lawn landscape companies all the time, and they get so excited by these uh, webinars and the tools and you know, just talking and talking and talking about marketing and sales. Um, but I will say very few will actually put this stuff into action. So I will urge you guys. Well, you called them out. I, I know. Like I'm sorry. I will urge you guys. You don't have to take action on every single thing that you hear, but pick one, two, three priorities that you're going to put into practice this season and commit to it. And do it right away. Okay. Do we have any other questions from the crew? And it's okay if we don't. But... <laughs> cool, Ted. Well, and here's the thing. If, you, um, if you're going through some of the key points and ideas that you want to focus on and you have more questions, my contact info is up there. I'm happy to, to speak with anybody um, regarding any of these topics. Um, and uh, I would say check out the links. Uh, Katie's going to have a, a follow-up email that goes out, a.k.a. another touch point. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, Guilty as charged. And, but it's got really good information in it. Um, you know, if you just went through this entire thing and, and paid attention to it and you want to follow up on something, check out those links because uh, it's going to have significantly more information 
and it may just have a different angle of explanation that will make a little bit more sense for you and, and help you uh, get it into process. So feel free to reach out to me, keep an eye out for Katie's email. And uh, if it's you or someone else within your business that you think the next webinar can, can help, um, then make sure you uh, let them know about it. And, and uh, we would love to have them and, and we're here to help. And uh, you know we're in a, a, a community of building partners. Um, Lee is a good example of that. A lot of the, the attendees on this webinar are a good example of that. Um, you know, through your uh, loyalty to us, uh, we're able to build our business and we want to help you build yours. So thank you for being on the webinar today and feel free to reach out to any of us anytime that you need to and, and uh, we'll go from there.